Apple's $550 pair of headphones. Let's review them. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, BMAC. And if this is your first time here to this channel, welcome, thanks for stopping by. Make sure you smash that subscribe button with all notifications turned on so that you never miss another video on this channel. And if you've been here before, or if you already subscribed, welcome back. So yes, indeed, today we are taking a look at these babies right here, the, oh my gosh, the Apple AirPods Max. I probably should not hold them that way. It's going to happen again. The Apple AirPods Max, and I got to say right out of the box, this is definitely one of the most luxurious pair of headphones I've ever tested. So let's do it. Let's dive into it. The review of the AirPods Max. First things first, let's talk about one of the most obvious features of the AirPods Max, the design and how these look and feel when they're on your head. So once again, let me just say that these feel sleek, they feel sexy, they definitely feel of premium quality. And you'll notice right away, one of the first things you'll see is that these headphones are actually mostly made out of metal, which is different than what we're used to. Most headphones are made out of plastic, but on the AirPods Max, we've got some metal. That does make the headphones significantly heavier than what we're used to, but I will say that doesn't seem to make much of a difference when they're actually on your head. You can't feel the added weight. And I just gotta point this out here. This is very unique. I have not yet seen a pair of headphones with this canopy style headband. The headband, as you can see, has a knit mesh fabric, which distributes the weight of the headphones, the heavier weight that we were talking about earlier, pretty nicely when they're being worn. But in addition to that, you are also getting these telescoping arms. And you'll see the ear cups pretty easily rotate freely. The headband itself has a little bit of flex, and they will automatically adjust the angle at which they rest over your ears. And all that together is what honestly helps balance that perceived comfortability, but also stability and snug fit. In terms of buttons, you do have a pretty minimal setup here when it comes to physical buttons on the AirPods Max. Only two buttons that you're working with here. You have a digital crown that of course rotates. It also serves as a button and that's going to give you your volume control, your track control, your phone call control, and of course your Siri control. And then noise control button, which is actually not a power button, even though it looks like one. It's a noise control button. This is the button that's going to let you toggle between your favorite listening modes, most notably between active noise cancellation, and transparency mode. And that's pretty much it. The only other thing you're gonna notice is a lightning port on the bottom of the right ear cup. You're gonna plug in your lightning cord there to charge up your AirPods Max. In terms of colors, you actually have five different colors to choose from when it comes to this pair of headphones. The AirPods Max are available in space gray, silver, green, sky blue, or pink. All of the colors, of course, looking beautiful. And all of the colors actually coming with these removable ear cups, which may pave the way for customization in the future. And of course, the AirPods AirPods Max come complete with their matching color of the smart case. But speaking of smart cases, uh, the AirPods Max smart case like we have right here isn't so smart. For one thing, I do not like the design of this case whatsoever. It looks more like a piece of clothing than it does an actual case. Legitimately, it looks like a bikini top. I don't get it. But besides that, there's a design flaw. It really isn't that protective of the AirPods Max. When you put the AirPods Max into their case, you'll notice there's actually exposed areas of the AirPods Max, which if you ask me, kind of defeats the purpose of a headphones case. I put my headphones in a case to fully protect them. That is not the case with the smart case. And the headband itself is fully exposed. And when you have that mesh fabric on top there, that snags on something sharp and that breaks, you're gonna run into some issues. But besides that, like we just mentioned a few minutes ago, there is no power button on the AirPods Max. Instead, what we get is a noise control button. So what you're expected to do is actually put the AirPods Max in this smart case when you're done using them, which is supposed to put the AirPods Max in an ultra low power state to conserve battery life. That's kind of the equivalent of turning them off, I guess. But since the AirPods Max release, Apple has actually said, you know, unless you're putting the AirPods Max away for a longer period of time, this power that you're gonna save by putting them in the smart case is probably negligible for small periods of time. So smart case, not really a fan. In fact, I had to find this for filming this video because it's been down here on my studio floor since I got these. 
to be completely honest. But let's talk about one of the main reasons you're probably watching this video, probably one of the main reasons you'd invest in a pair of headphones altogether, sound quality. How do these AirPods Max sound, and do they sound good? I will go on the record and say right now, I will not keep you waiting. These headphones sound quality pack a punch in more ways than one. And a lot of that has to do with the performance that Apple has built into the headphones. These days, it's not just a matter of getting some drivers and putting it in something that you could wear over your ears. Mm -mm. There's performance packed into these babies. In fact, you're getting an H1 chip in each ear cup. And that performance is leading to some pretty unique features. For one thing, something we've heard Apple talking about before, computational audio. And if you don't know what computational audio is, basically it's Apple's way of audio signal processing through the unique 10 different audio cores built into each H1 chip, which will help with blocking outside noise for the active noise cancellation, but also adapt the audio that you're hearing in the headphones to conform to the fit and seal that you have. This is further enhanced by an adaptive EQ, whereby the headphones literally listen to what you're hearing and will make adjustments to make that supposedly and theoretically the best listening experience you could possibly have with these headphones. So that's gonna give you richer, higher fidelity, and overall better sounding sounds when you're listening to audio. Pretty cool futuristic stuff as it relates to your actual listening experience and I'm liking it. On top of that, you do have the active noise cancellation, which in my mind is an integral part of having a good audio listening experience these days. And that's gonna allow me to hear more of what I wanna hear, less of what I don't, and theoretically listen at a lower volume, which is gonna lead to healthier listening patterns. But with these two features working together, my personal experience with the AirPods Max sound quality could pretty much be summed up into one word and one word in particular. Depth. In terms of what I'm hearing when I have these AirPods Max playing music, the thing I notice is depth. The soundstage is deep. You definitely hear the bass, you definitely hear the mids, you definitely hear the highs, and there's precise details across the entire EQ spectrum. But what I've really noticed about these headphones is not just the listening experience providing you with what you wanna to listen to sounding good, it's more of an experience. It feels like certain sounds are coming at different angles and from different distances, and it feels like you're actually like in the studio listening to the audio you're listening to, as opposed to listening to the audio you're listening to on a pair of headphones that's on your head. If there's any kind of emphasis, I will say the EQ seems to be a little bit strong in the mids, and sometimes it feels like there's a little bit too much sibilance for certain sounds, like certain hi-hats. But overall, I'm happy with the listening experience. It's just different, it's unique, and again, the best way I could describe it is just depth. Now, I know a lot of people love specifically hearing about the bass in a pair of headphones, and if you're a bass head, you're gonna notice a more realistic bass in these AirPods Max. So in other words, you are gonna hear bass, but it's gonna be more thumpy bass as opposed to more rumbling, vibrating, head rattling bass like some pairs of headphones provide. The more I started to listen to different genres, the more I started to watch movies and TV shows with these headphones, the more I really started to pick up on what makes them so good. And overall, I'm a lot more pleasantly surprised with these than I thought I was going to be. They have really grown on me. The little intricacies, the detail in the sounds, the overall depth, oh, these sound really, really good. But having said that, I do still wish these headphones got just a little bit louder. If I had one complaint to make when it comes to the AirPods Max, it's that I constantly find myself floating around 90 to 95% volume, sometimes even 100%, and I'd really like to have more left in the tank, so to speak, as it relates to volume potential. Because if I'm consistently listening at 90 to 95, maybe even 100%, that says to me that these headphones aren't necessarily as loud as they probably should be, and that's with sound check and all that stuff turned off. But when I'm listening to TV shows and movies, or I guess that would be watching them, because when you're watching, you're watching in, regardless, when I'm watching TV shows and movies while using the AirPods Max for the audio, I've actually found myself turning down the audio more than I thought it would, because those seem to get loud. So it's not like the headphones aren't capable of getting loud, but it just seems that when I'm listening to music with the Apple Music app, I'm constantly pretty high up there when it comes to the max volume that I'm setting these to. But above all else, the number one feature that I am most impressed with with this pair of headphones has to be spatial audio. The spatial audio on the AirPods Max is so darn good. It's at the point where I literally don't want to have to watch a movie or a TV show without these headphones on with spatial audio turned on because the experience of listening to the movie or the TV show with these headphones is literally something like out of this world. It's like I have a sound bar and I could hear where sounds are coming from. I could literally hear things going by my ear, but without having a sound bar on. 
I'm just having headphones on. I tested this out recently with the Lord of the Rings trilogy, which I snagged off of iTunes. The trilogy, three movies, $24.99. 4K, HDR, Dolby Audio, gotta love it. Great, great trilogy to put these headphones to the test to. And I will say the spatial audio did take a little getting used to when watching that movie at first. But again, there's kind of like a learning curve with these things. After about 20 minutes or so, I'm like, okay, this spatial audio thing's pretty legit. I like this. And it just adds a whole new level of depth and clarity to the movie or the TV show you're watching, where again, you feel immersed in the movie or the TV show, and that alone might make worth these, might make worth these, okay, that makes sense. Might make these headphones worth checking out, literally, just for the movie and TV show experience alone. That's how great it is. And then to top all that off, something I didn't even touch on, but there is on-head detection, which means the AirPods will know when you put them on and when you take them off to automatically play and pause your music. And you are getting message announcements because you do have H1 chips built into the AirPods Max, so if you connect this to an iOS device, you're gonna be able to hear your messages coming in and you can respond to those messages all hands-free, which means you also do get hands-free, hey, Siri. See, I always do that for you guys. I wait, I do the hey, and then I wait to say Siri because I don't wanna be triggering a million iPhones all across the world. But you do have hands-free Siri as well, so you can access anything you could possibly want through Siri, completely hands-free, just by wearing these headphones. Oh, and you do have auto switching as well, which seems to be pretty much finally perfected. So if you're going from your iPad to your iPhone when using these AirPods Max within the Apple ecosystem, the different devices recognize how that's working and the AirPods Max will automatically connect to the device you're using. Pretty cool stuff, all of which is making these AirPods Max pretty closely live up to all their hype. But all this is fine and dandy until your battery dies, right? So what's the battery like on the AirPods Max and how long can you expect these puppies to be lasting for? Apple has said that the AirPods Max are capable of up to 20 hours of listening time, which means 20 hours of music listening, TV shows, or phone calls, 20 hours. And that is 20 hours with active noise cancellation and spatial audio turned on. But even at 75% volume, keeping it there for a consistent period of time, I actually think I got a little bit more than 20 hours. So 20 hours is the guarantee. That seems to be accurate. If you listen to it a little bit louder, then perhaps a little less, but overall, pretty good battery life. And in case you happen to be in a bind and in case you're wondering, yes, you do get fast charging on the AirPods Max as well. If these things are at 0%, completely dead, you just plug them into the lightning cable that you have and five minutes, 1.5 hours of listening time. Pretty good ratio. Not the fastest fast charge we've seen. Other headphones can charge a little bit faster and provide a little bit more for just a five minute charge. But for most people's purposes, getting an hour and a half of listening time on just a five minute charge, pretty solid. So with all this having been said, of course the moment you've been waiting for, here are my final thoughts on the AirPods Max and whether or not you should consider getting them. At the end of the day, yes, we know the Apple AirPods Max are pricey. And do the AirPods Max live up to their rather luxurious price point? I struggle to definitively say yes here. If it weren't for the sheer level of depth and that futuristic kind of listening experience you have with these AirPods Max, I'd hesitate to say yes, but if you're an avid movie or TV show watcher, especially if you use Apple TV to do so, or if you just love hearing the depth and detail in your music and just feeling like you're immersed in your music, you will appreciate what the AirPods Max offer. If you just want a comfortable pair of headphones that are still gonna provide impressive sound performance, you could definitely find another pair of headphones for about half the price that are impressive for what they are, but the AirPods Max are kind of just a step upon those, meaning that they just have additional features that help them be a little bit better for a little bit more money. If you have the bills to spend and you wanna go for it, Go for it. I give these a positive review, I like them. I didn't think I was going to, to be completely honest. I did not think I was gonna like them, but they grew on me, and now even just holding them in my hand makes me wanna go listen to music. But of course, if you guys are interested in learning more about the AirPods Max, or just to snag a pair of these puppies for yourself, you guys could always head to my affiliate link, bmac.link slash AirPods Max. bmac.link slash AirPods Max, or as always, there will be a clickable link in the video description box below as well, so check that out. And with that being said, I actually still have to go watch the third of the three movies in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. It's a big commitment, man. I, I forgot how long the movies are, like three hours each. That's nine hours. Got myself into a little bit of a pickle with that one, but I'm excited to do it. I'm excited. I will see you guys in my next video. I still don't understand what Apple was thinking when it comes to this smart case. It, it does not look like a case whatsoever. It looks like a piece of clothing.